Good afternoon. I welcome my viewers again from across the globe and thank you for being part of our show. Uh, today we turn our attention to East Africa because reports emanating from there indicate that the state of Israel is about to raid Africa. Please don't be alarmed. I'm not talking about air raid with uh, F-16 fighters. But I'm talking about raids of a different type. Uh, in AfricanNews.com, uh, in a publication titled uh, Kenya to send uh, 1,500 workers to Israel amid farm labor shortages published on the 7th of December 2023. The report says as Kenya is set to send 1,500 farm workers to Israel, according to the country's labor ministry. This move follows uh, Malawi sending 221 workers to Israel, which faced a uh, criticism. The casual laborers will work on three-year renewable contracts, ensuring a net monthly income of $1,500. That is £1,195 per month. The report says that Israel grappling with the significant farm labor shortage has turned to Africa for assistance with over 10,000 migrant workers, mainly from Thailand, living since the conflict with Hamas began in October. The report continues. It says Palestinian workers constituting nearly 20% of the agricultural labor force have been bad. So we deduce from what we have just said that one, workers from Thailand have decided to return home because it's not safe to stay there. And now Palestinian workers, secondly, are not welcome anymore. So what do we say about these things? Because it's, it looks like a self-inflicted wound. The same way the EU refused to buy Russian gas because of the conflict in Ukraine. And then they unleashed untold hardship on their citizens in terms of unprecedented cost of living crisis. That's exactly what's happening there. I continue with the report. To address the shortfall, Israel plans to recruit farm workers from Uganda with commitments already underway in Tanzania. The shortage is attributed to around three 160,000 Israeli reservists called off for military service since the conflict began. According to this report, the announcement has sparked mixed reactions in Kenya with concerns raised about workers' safety. Now we will address that later on in this video. Critics question the conditions workers may face in Israel referencing past reports of unsafe practices and unsanitary living conditions. However, according to the report, supporters argue that the deal provides crucial employment opportunities amid Kenya's unemployment crisis with a 5.5% unemployment rate, according to the World Bank. Israel's ambassador in Kenya, Michael Lotem, assures that measures are in place to ensure fair treatment of foreign workers, allowing them to file complaints that will be addressed promptly. Kenya is not alone in this arrangement, because in another African news report of 30th of November 2023, titled Malawians Pursue Opportunities in Israel Amid Economic Challenges, that report says that hundreds of people have queued outside the hotel in the Malawi capital this week for a chance to work in Israel, worry of the war, but willing to face the dangers to escape their own country's woes. It says that more than 220 Malawians flew to Israel on Saturday as part of a 
government labor export program aimed at finding jobs for young people and generating desperately needed foreign exchange. With Malawi's economy in deep trouble, thousands are ready to take on jobs on Israeli farms and orchards left deserted by Gaza conflict. One of the Malawian recruits said, it is everyone's dream to acquire capital. You know, like in Malawi, most Malawian youths, they tend to say, we struggle. We struggle a lot when it comes to capital, even after finalizing tertiary education. Now, that issue is not peculiar to Malawi. It is something that happens all over Africa. But this youth continues. He says, so if I am to be successful during this event of going to Israel, I will gain a lot of experience and possibly open my farm. And the name of that recruit or that potential recruit is Blessings Kaimbo. So Malawi, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, these are the African countries that are sending a way that people to a war zone. I am certain too that other African nations will soon join the queue. The Israeli ambassador told the nation newspaper, according to this report, that the deal was a win-win situation for the two countries. So Malawians will earn good money and knowledge while Israel with feel Pat Phil, I would say, it's labor gap. So the ambassador said it's a win-win situation because one, the state of Israel will address, or we use that opportunity to address labor shortages in the agricultural sector. Two, it will keep Israeli agriculture afloat. Three, it will boost Productivity, so productivity levels will not be affected at all. Now, on the other hand, part of the advantages is that it will generate employment for African youths from these countries that have entered in, into this agreement with the state of Israel. Secondly, it will lead to transfer of technical and agricultural skills to these African workers, and they can utilize these skills upon their return home. Thirdly, it will help their families and, and the home government in terms of remittances of foreign exchange. And somehow, this will ease partially the foreign exchange burden of the Malawian government. It will also help to ease the burden, the poverty burden on individual families. Now, but despite these advantages, on this channel. We question the wisdom in sending away young Africans to work in a conflict zone. Now, whereas workers from Thailand, they have all decided to go home. We do not know yet whether it is their government that decided to pull them out or whether these workers are the ones who decided on their own accord to go home. So whereas Workers from Thailand have quit. African governments have chosen the path of desperation in sending their people to a war zone. This is sad and very shameful indeed because it does show the kind of value, the kind of low value that is placed on the lives of our people. It does not consider the fact that the conflict may draw on and on. Nobody knows uh, how complex it could become. Nobody knows how long it could be. This conflict may take a different complexion, and these African workers may find themselves trapped in the state of Israel. It does not consider the fact that these African workers may face racial issues in that land. Now, when the conflict in Ukraine broke out, it took a while for African students in that country to be 
evacuated. It took a while. And our contention here is that if this deal with the State of Israel was indeed a good deal, why the secrecy that was attached to it? And why has no one considered the potential risks, I would say, the substantial risks attached to this move? And here we draw the curtains today. I want to thank my viewers for watching. And if you have found this content useful, please consider to subscribe to our channel and help us to grow. You may also consider to like what we do because when you press on the like button, you send a signal to YouTube algorithm and this video will be projected. So you are helping you are supporting the channel when you press the like button. You may also consider to share so that many more people will become aware of the existence of this channel. You may also take a step further. If you're really a fan of this channel, consider to be a member. I'm going to place on the screen right now uh, the, a, a kind of logo that helps you to know what to do if you want to be a member under this video there is a join option that is what you do and now suppose you don't want to be a member you just want to give one of support there is something called super thanks and i'm also placing the logo on the screen to enable you understand what super thanks is all about but it's a one of support for the purpose of helping this channel to grow so I thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.